In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about working with the Lightroom Develop module. Now, typically, people rush over here to the right side of the Develop module and pretty much ignore what's going on on the left side. So today, I want to redress the balance a bit and talk a little bit about a couple of tools that haven't changed for a long time in Lightroom, but people seem to forget about. And that's actually the History panel and the Snapshot panel. And both of these are really, really helpful in adjusting your images. So let's take a look first off at the image I have here. Uh, this is one of uh, Scarfell in the Lake District and I've already adjusted it. I've tried to go for a very natural look in the image. Um, the day was very bright, this was taken in the middle of the day, probably early afternoon, um, and the conditions were quite overcast and blue. This image pretty much represents what I remember at the time with reasonable amount of impact. So over here on the left of the screen you can see some of the history that um, of the changes that I've been making as I've gone through the adjustments. Now as I'm scrolling up and down the screen you should notice the navigator here is reflecting the changes um, that I've made at the time. So what we can do is we can very quickly go back to the original image by clicking on it. And there you can see how we started. As I scroll back through the images again, um, the history, I can click on the latest change there. And that's how the image was when I uh, finished all the adjustments. To compare the two side by side, you can use this option here. And that allows you to do a before and an after comparison. So you can see there's not too much changed, but the image itself um, has more impact and more depth to it. You can also compare them uh, left and right split, as well as um, some of the other options which are top and bottom. It really depends on the size of your screen and the resolution as to which is going to be best for you. Now at the moment I'm just going to return back to this image. Um, so you can see there the adjusted image and the next thing I'm going to do is take a snapshot because I've got the image looking just how I want it to. So we'll create um, this first snapshot. Once we've taken that, this snapshot appears in our list. Now you can delete it using the um, delete option there or you can right click and actually delete it there. You can also rename as well as update the snapshot with any further settings you make. But we're not going to do that. What we're actually going to do is come down and we're going to create a virtual copy of our image. Now the virtual copy gets created next to the original. You can see down here in the film strip that the virtual copy has been stacked with the original. So you, um, they both get grouped together in uh, Lightroom. It's got a little tab on the corner there so that it indicates it's a virtual copy. And you can see here the history of the virtual copy has been reset. And now all we've got is the create virtual copy, which was the first action on this image. Interestingly though, the snapshot still remains available. So let's just go back to the original image. And there you can see your history still intact. On the virtual copy, again, the snapshot's still there, but there's no history. So let's say that we decide this image is looking a bit blue and we want to warm it up. So we might actually go back and increase the color temperature here, somewhere nearer where it was uh, actually captured. The uh, image is actually looking very saturated, so we might take out a little bit of the vibrancy um, and we can also close up some of the shadows to make the image look a little bit darker. Uh, maybe as well we'll reduce that contrast down a bit but we'll also at the same time uh, reduce some of the exposure a little. But 
we'll also pull up some of the whites to make the image a little bit brighter. So over here, as I've been making those changes, you can see the changes reflected in the history. Now, let's say we decide, Ooh, I didn't like the uh, exposure adjustment we made. So rather than um, continuing from um, this point to try to adjust it, let's go back to the contrast setting where we reduced it there. Now watch what happens when I create a change to the exposure and I release that, the history restarts from the point that I made the change. So I was on contrast and now all we can see is the exposure option. So let's say now that we get this image to look the way we want it to. Um, it's quite a bit warmer than the original image. Um, we will, let's say, add in more saturation. And this time what we'll do is we'll take another snapshot. And we'll call this one snapshot two. Okay, we now have two snapshots with different sets of settings and we can simply toggle between the two to see which one we prefer. So in, in my case I prefer the first snapshot whereas we've also got snapshot 2 which is a little bit more unnatural. So what we can do now if we wish to is we can remove the virtual copy. So we simply right click, select the remove photo and remove that. Now at that point, it looks like everything's been reset, but it hasn't. All Lightroom's done is selected the next image in the catalogue rather than the original. If I go back to the original, what you can see is all the adjustments we made on the original. But now here's the interesting thing. We've got Snapshot 2 available to us as well. So Snapshot 1, Snapshot 2, and let's say we'll stick with Snapshot 1. Now the next thing I'm going to do is show you um, quite a useful tip and we're going to edit this now in Photoshop. Okay, so just take a moment to open. There we go. So that now represents the image just as we had it in Lightroom, generated from the raw file and imported into Photoshop. Let's say we can uh, add a little bit of effect in with Viveza now. So we'll make this um, a selective effect on the grass in the foreground and we'll reduce the saturation of that a little bit. We'll add some structure to it and we'll also add in a little bit of contrast. The other thing we'll do is we'll take the uh, dark greens of the, um, the ferns here and we'll open up the shadows a little bit. We'll also increase the contrast just a little bit, just to allow for the fact that we are opening up the shadows, and we'll push the structure up a little bit. Um, okay, there we go. And over here, we will saturate the blue in the uh, lake quite a bit, and we'll also up the contrast. There we go. So if we turn the preview off, you can see I've made some subtle changes there. And um, perhaps the one on here, there's a little bit too much loss of sh shadow there. Okay, there we are. So we've now got that looking the way we want. If we click OK, we'll return now to uh, Photoshop. And there's the new adjustment. And we've got two layers here. I'm just going to flatten those for the moment. And now I'm going to save this as an edited version uh, in TIFF format um, in the original folder. Now when I do that, you can see down here now the saving progress. When I do that, what will happen is that the image, when we close it, if we now go back to Lightroom, you see that the image that we created is now also available in the Lightroom catalog and has been stacked or grouped with the original. If I now go into the library mode and I look at 
the um, thumbnail view, you can see these are the two versions of the image. This first one is the one that we just did in Lightroom. The second one is the one that we took into Photoshop and then adjusted with Viveza. And of course you can collapse that group down because effectively it's two versions of the same image. So that's a really neat way of taking your work into Photoshop and then back into Lightroom. Together with the history file, the snapshot option, that's a really useful set of tools to help you work with your images much better in Lightroom.